What's up, guys? It is Ryan here with Michigan Storm Chasers. I wanted to get, hop on here and give you guys a radar look of what happened yesterday in Livonia and perhaps explain why or perhaps why we had a freak spin up tornado here that unfortunately took the life of a two year old um, little boy in Livonia. So a lot of questions, a lot of frustration, not only on our part, but also the part of NWS in Detroit and also just the general public and those affected by the storm. There was really nothing that we could have done differently. I'll put it up front here. I know there's probably a lot of things that need to be said or can be said about weather and about forecasting and stuff like that. It's not perfect by any means, and this is a great example of why. At the end of the day, uh, looking back at everything, there's nothing we could have really done differently. Um, but I will try to do my best here to explain what happened uh, in, in this general localized vicinity here. So yesterday's environment across Michigan, we had a decent amount of wind shear in our mid to upper levels, but we lacked a lot of low level wind shear, which is vital to uh, tornadoes. And also we lacked a large amount of spin. We call it a helicity or storm relative helicity, SRH. We need shear like that uh, and SRH to get tornadoes to become a concern. We didn't have either one of those. We did mention on our briefing yesterday morning before this happened that we do have localized pockets of enhanced wind shear that can occur here in Michigan, particularly what we call lake breeze boundaries. Very common we get in the summertime, we have winds coming in off of Lake Erie and also Lake Michigan, Lake Huron as well. Kind of looks like something like this, a little bit of like a bow that kind of pushes throughout the afternoon and evening inland, and that can spark an, uh, storms by producing enhanced lift and also enhanced localized shear along that boundary, okay? That could have been in play yesterday because Livonia is well within play of that Lake Breeze boundary sometimes. Could we see it yesterday on our satellite? No, we could not. So we had no way of telling if there was one, if it was present. It very well could have been, though. So that's our theory that could have happened. But also looking back on radar here, I do want to mention one thing I just noticed today, and that is this cell out in front of this line. OK, so this is Livonia right up here where the tornado happened around this general vicinity. We have this line of storms here that produced moving up toward Livonia, but we have this rogue shower over Canton that developed. OK, this is before it happened. But as we animate this, this shower moves north and this line moves that way. So these two storms basically merge together over the Livonia area. When storms merge together like this, it very well could have uh, produced enhanced lift and also enhanced the wind shear there. Because when storms merge, we can get that uh, localized spin there. A good example of this happened back on August 24th of last year, up in the Grand Rapids Rockford area, where we had two storms converge together. And within about five, 10 minutes, we had a tornado that happened on the ground there uh, in Rockford. And that was also an EF1 tornado as well. Uh, so the storm merger here also could have been a factor. And honestly, looking at the forecast this day, storm mergers in general on severe weather days cannot be predicted because they pop up randomly at random locations. Uh, and sometimes, you know, mergers do nothing. Sometimes mergers can make storms die. But on days like yesterday, it very well could have combined here and also produced that localized area of spin happen as that storm moved through Livonia. OK, one thing I do want to cover with this is also why was there no warning? Why was there no siren? All right. If we go back here on our radar to our velocity, our wind velocity here, we do see a localized pocket of brighter color in green here. I'll go ahead and circle it north of Canton as the storm moves toward Livonia. That would be indicating at most here on radar, straight line winds. But if we look at our tool here to inspect how strong, the brightest color we get here is only 51 miles per hour, which is still below severe limits. Now, if we move this toward Livonia, we're gonna see that area of concern just before it touched down here, and we're still only getting 50 or so miles per hour. And notice how there's really no rotation here. With rotation, you'd see a brighter red color over here and a brighter green color. All we're seeing here is a pocket of localized heavier winds, still below severe limits. Next scan here, as the tornado is in progress, the again, the winds here still at most 51 miles per hour here. And notice we do have some red showing up here, but still only 
about six miles per hour of red. That would be gate to gate shear here of right around 56 miles per hour, which doesn't even equal tornado winds. Could there have been a weak mesocyclone here via radar? Sure. Does this tell us that there is there is a tornado here on the ground? No. All this is telling us here is there's a pocket, very localized pocket of brighter straight line winds. Okay. Next scan here, it does weaken out significantly. And that would just sell, tell us there's nothing going on here at all. So all we really saw here on radar as this moved through the Livonia was just a pocket of localized winds with maybe just a hint of rotation. Another thing we can look at here is our debris product. We call it correlation coefficient. As that moved through Livonia here, it's going to be kind of hard to line this up here, but here's that cell out in front that combined. We're going to see no debris ball here. I'll overlap what a debris ball looks like so you guys know what to look for here. But looking at the correlation coefficient product here, this is at 333 as it's on the ground here. Somewhere up in here, north of Livonia, we don't see any debris being lofted by this tornado. So yes, radar missed it. We didn't miss it. NWS didn't miss it. We just didn't see it because technology is not capable of predicting it. The radar beam, again, from Detroit up here where you see this green DTX name to Livonia down here, the radar beam shoots up in the atmosphere roughly 1,500 feet. So what's below 1,500 feet, we can't see on radar, okay? That is the major limitation here. Uh, when we look at radar across not only not only Michigan, but just the United States in general, radars are not capable of seeing what's on the ground unless you're really, really close to the radar. So that beam is shooting well up in the atmosphere. We're missing what's happening below that 1,500 foot mark. OK. When they issue warnings, they look for three or four different criteria. Is there tight rotation? The answer yesterday, no. Was there debris? No. Was the environment favorable? No. Was there a spotter report or confirmation visually? No. So those four boxes were not checked. And that is why no warning was issued, either severe or tornadic. There was no reports coming out of the area and they only saw localized pocket of heavier straight line winds being shown on our radar products. So it's nobody's fault. Unfortunately, somebody lost their life yesterday. It's unfortunate, but looking back here, it's not fair to blame anybody whether it's Livonia Township officials, whether it's Detroit National Weather Service, us, meteorologists, storm chasers, it's nobody's fault. It's just the unfortunate technology uh, capabilities just weren't able to depict and catch this, if that makes sense. I hope that clears some stuff up. I know there's a lot of frustration going around. I know there's a lot of theories, a lot of opinions, but coming to you from an honest standpoint here uh, of our knowledge of weather, radar, and stuff like that, we just couldn't see it. All right, so I hope that clears things up. As far as it's concerned, um, things like this happen in Michigan sometimes. It's not uncommon, uh, but again, we hope to advance technology in the future. It's also why storm chasers like us exist. So appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed, leave a comment, hit the like button. We would appreciate that. And also be sure to show your support for the community of Livonia as they deal with this tragic incident.